Isn't it unfortunate when you expect someone to be there and they're just not there? Hi, my name is Justin Keller, and this is my oral presentation for the research report on TARDI employees. In this oral presentation, we will be reviewing some of the comp top tier companies and what policies that they enact to avoid absences with their employees. We will then be reviewing some case studies that discuss the differences and the effectiveness of these policies. Our first example is that of punishment policies. The Home Depot is a very large Fortune 500 company that employs hundreds of thousands of employees across multiple nations. It's very important and crucial that, th that they maintain accurate and full staffing to be able to meet the, the customer's demands. To meet this need, they have implemented a punishment policy that is a progressive occurrence-based system. It starts with the, the uh, employee missing days of work, which leads to occurrences. After three occurrences, the employee uh, will gain what's called a counseling session, and then a coaching after an additional three, and then a final, which can then lead to termination. This is a punitive measure that they implemented in order to avoid uh, employees or discourage employees from missing days of work or from arriving late. For reinforcement policies, we see the example of Honda, which is another very large company based in America. They uh, are a car manufacturer um, uh, plant that when their employees do not arrive, production suffers, which then leads to lower, uh, lower uh, profits and revenue for the company. To avoid this issue, Honda implements an incentive program to encourage their employees to arrive on time and frequently enough to gain the monetary incentive. After each month of, of, uh, of attendance, without any occurrences or any misses or lates, they receive monetary bonuses and will continue receiving those monetary bonuses with, uh, with no occurrences or no missed days. If they were to miss a day, they would lose their bonus for that month and have to start again at the beginning. We'll then review some of the effectiveness and some of the case studies that review effectiveness of the positive and negative reinforcement techniques that we see applied here. Michael, uh, Michael Carson uh, created a lab rat study in which it gave the uh, lab rat the opportunity for, um, for cheese. However, they implemented, like whenever the lab rat chose the wrong decision, instead of being rewarded, it was met with a violent shock. Now, Michael Carson concluded from the study that without the, um, the threat of a shock, the lab rat still continued to do the negative behavior. When applied this to the workforce, we see that when, the, when we take away the punitive measure of, of possibly termination, it doesn't correct a behavior. So when, when the employee feels that they're no longer being monitored or they have no threat of punishment, that behavior will return. We want to encourage the employees to, to um, find value in, in coming to work, which creates a better morale. We see this in the effectiveness of the reinforcement techniques. Courtney Ackerman um, reviewed a, uh, the case study of the psychological effects of, of positive reinforcement, she concluded that it not only increased morale and loyalty, but also had no negative side effects. And when the um, employees felt more self-responsible for their attendance, they saw a decrease in, in uh, uh, turnovers, they saw a decrease in um, absences, and all around was a much better way of enforcing attendance policies than the negative reinforcement counterpart. In conclusion, we've reviewed different case studies of, of positive and negative reinforcement techniques in the workforce. We've reviewed the effectiveness of both of these policies and, have, and can clearly conclude that a positive reinforcement technique is much more effective than a negative reinforcement technique. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful day.